on Larry King Now, YouTuber Markiplier. I've pretty much confessed my entire existence on YouTube. You're an open book. I believe that YouTube lives on authenticity. So like if, if they don't know who I am as a person, then there's no point in even making videos. You got sports games? What sport do you like? Baseball. Okay, there's plenty of baseball games. So I'd probably be good at baseball. Yeah, it depends. Uh, there's, there's a difference between playing baseball by uh, actually swinging a back and playing baseball by pressing buttons. We've raised probably over three and a half million dollars for charity throughout my channel. We've, we've just done this because I just firmly believe that a group of people, you know, even if we're just watching video games, like any group of people can make a difference in the world. Plus, he's an eight-year-old kid. Apparently him and his family make $22 million a year opening toys. Wait a minute. <laughs> They get a box of toys. Yeah. They open it up and pull it out. Yeah. They make $22 million a year. Yeah. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest is Markiplier, the YouTube personality with over 22 million subscribers and 10 billion views to his name. Markiplier is known for his Let's Play gameplay commentary videos, as well as his animations, sketch comedies, and blogs. And he's been named the number one influencer in gaming by Forbes magazine and Variety's top 20 celebrities among teenagers. In October of this year, he launched a fashion line called Cloak, and recently he used his online voice to raise $250,000 for stand-up to cancer. How did this all start? How, what's Markiplier? Is that one word? Yeah, one word. And man, all those things you said, I, half of those I didn't even know. So <laughs> I didn't know Forbes said that about me. Um, so that's pretty cool. But, Why are you one word Markiplier? Well, okay, the name is kind of dumb uh, because my brother came up with it and I'll blame him for it being dumb. Originally when I was doing YouTube, I wanted to make sketch comedy videos where I play all the characters. My name is Mark. I would multiply myself, multiplier, Mark, Markiplier, and then I started making gaming videos and it didn't make any sense, so I just stuck with it. Just leave it. But I can call you Mark. If you want to. <laughs> All right, how did you become what you are? Honestly, I'd say it was more of an accident than anything. I was in school for biomedical engineering when I started, and I hit kind of this low point in my life where like, I got laid off from my job. I was working in engineering co-op. I was in a bad relationship. I had to get my appendix taken out. And then when they took out my appendix, they found a tumor in my adrenal gland. So it was like a series of bad events where I felt like life wasn't in control anymore. It wasn't a cancerous tumor, so I was fine. They just needed to take it out. Um, but I just remember sitting in the hospital bed, just like looking up and around being like, I have done nothing to actually make a difference in my own life. How old were you? I was 22, 22 at the time, mm -hmm. I think. What did you do? I mean, I did a bunch of things. I tried writing, I tried making a comic. My brother, he's a comic book artist. And uh, I tried drawing, I tried committing back to biomedical engineering, I tried video game programming. I just tried everything that I possibly could. And I was failing at things over and over and over again. And when I wanted to do YouTube, I only did it because my brother had told me about Let's Plays on YouTube where people play video games and I was like, I've been playing video games all my life. People say I have a decent voice. Maybe I could combine the two and try to do something with it because I tried to make sketch videos. I didn't even know how to hold the camera. So if I actually made these videos, I could practice my voice. Maybe I could be a voice actor. I actually had no idea that it would ever take off in the way that it did. Yeah. And what, did, what, what took off? I mean, just the channel itself. I mean, the scales of it are incredible when you really think about it, because now it's 22 million, but that number doesn't even make sense. That's like the population of a huge city. Um, but when I was first starting out and it would hit like 10,000 subscribers, I wasn't making any money then, but just the idea of 10,000 people in the same place watching my videos was mind boggling. And then uh, when I was still going to school for about a year after I started YouTube, I didn't start making money until about a year later. But once I did, I kind of evaluated my life and I was like, do I try to commit and finish school or do I commit myself fully to YouTube? And it was like a gamble. It was something my mom was not very happy about. When she found out that I dropped out of college, she was extremely upset with me. Uh, but it all worked out because I was able to dedicate my time and grow my channel from something small to something big. Where do you do this, out of your house? Yeah, I started in my mom's basement. 
literally in my mom's basement. Yeah. Okay, and how do you make money? I mean, there's some cases where I can go out and try to get individual deals with certain companies, and you can do a brand deal with them to try to get paid to promote a certain product, but it's majority through advertising. Do you have fans that write to you? Oh, all the time. Oh, yeah. The money comes from YouTube. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What do they like to work with? Uh, well, I would love to talk with them more. You don't talk to you much? Well, YouTube's kind of an enigma. They're a big company that has a tough time getting the word out from the company to the people who are making the videos. Now, I do have a contact at YouTube. Her name's Megan. She's wonderful. Uh, but it, it's really hard to get that communication going because they send a check, but we as YouTubers don't really have any say of what goes on on the platform. We, we just make videos, and uh, we're, not, we're not partners or anything in terms but of... But they videos. must be happy with you. It really depends on who you ask. Uh, there's some YouTubers that they're not happy with. There's some YouTubers that they're generally happy with. Why would with. they be not? But you're making them money. Uh, there are also sometimes YouTubers that damage the reputation of the platform and stuff like that. Yeah, because it's it's a very free market for people to make whatever. I'm trying they want. to understand it all. Could you take what you do to television? Probably not. No, I, I don't think it exists in the same sphere. Are you surprised at how all this has happened for you? Oh, yeah. Every Sitting day. around with appendix and a disease and a hospital and leaving school and look what's happened to you. Yeah, I, uh, I need reality checks all the time. It's very easy to fall into the trap of thinking that everything just happened. And when I look back at my life, and especially because I've got a catalog of videos that go back six and a half years, I get to look at these chapters in my life of like, I was at this point in my life in my mom's basement. I got my first apartment. I bought my first car. I moved to LA. Like I get to see how my life has evolved through my videos. Where do you do it now, out of your house? Yeah, out of my house. Mm -hmm. Are you married? No, got a girlfriend though. After the break, Mark Applier gives me some tips about breaking into the gaming community, plus some tell us about expanding outside of YouTube with a new clothing line called Cloak. We'll be right back. We are back with the phenomena that is Mark Applier. In the past, you've described yourself as an introvert. You still see yourself that way? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Shy? Not necessarily shy. I've built up the ability to talk to anybody, and public speaking's never bothered me, but it, it's just that kind of thing where I get the energy back when I'm by myself. I'm able to think, and I'm able to just be alone with my thoughts, and that's really where I default to. How do people communicate with you? I mean, ideally they don't. I'd rather shut myself off and nobody ever talk to me, uh, but I realized very quickly that being an introvert shuts you down from a lot of opportunities. Pushing myself out of my shell of being an introvert and trying to actually make connections with people is the only way that I've progressed in my life. It's the difference between pre-surgery and post-surgery where before surgery I was very closed off, I didn't feel like I needed to interact with anybody and then I realized that I had to put myself out there if I was gonna have any success in the world. So you're driven. Now I am, yeah. I'm a novice with all of this. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to start playing, what's the first thing I should do? Any game? I don't even know what, yeah, yeah, any game. You got sports games? There are sports games, yeah. Do you do any? Not me, personally, but there's plenty of people that do. What sport do you like? Baseball. Okay, there's plenty of baseball games. You can get any console to do that. You can get games on your phone if you wanted to do that. Uh, you basically just play a whole game of baseball against some computers, and you can just play whenever you want. And with people all over the world who are also playing. Yeah, you can do that, too. Yeah, there's multiplayer if you wanted that. So I'd probably be good at baseball. Yeah, it depends. Uh, there's, there's a difference between playing baseball by uh, actually swinging a back and playing baseball by pressing buttons. Yeah. How long do you see yourself doing this? As long as I can, I guess. What's Cloak? Cloak? Oh, this is, uh, this is my clothing brand. We see you coat. The, yeah. What do you make? What kind of clothing? It's okay. This it seems like I'm being a total sellout by wearing it, but the objective of it was actually uh, me and a buddy of mine, Sean, and uh, my manager, Ben, we were all talking about making clothing that we would want to wear every day, just really comfortable clothing. And so that's what we did at the end of it. And we just wanted a name for it, so we called it Cloak. And um, we started it because it was actually really hard to find clothes that were kind of 
everything that we would want whenever like we Like what? Like just comfortable, something that I could sit around like all day. T-shirts like that? T-shirts, sweatshirts, we're trying to get other pieces of clothing too. We got beanies. I mean, we're just starting out, so we're trying to start small. Where do you sell them? Online. It's all online. We don't even have a physical store, cloakbrand.com. When we return, we're gonna put him into the if you only knew hot seat. You won't wanna miss this. The new clothing line is Cloak. Stay with us on this edition of Larry King Now, and we'll be back after these words. The amazing story of Markiplier. How did you decide to do charity? Well, uh, that was an interesting story because when I first started out and I had like 1,500 subscribers, like at the very beginning of my channel. It was a big number. I went to Comic-Con in San Diego with my brother because he's a comic book artist. I went there. And uh, he had a booth, and I had so few subscribers, I never expected anybody to actually say hi to me, but five people did. And five people came up and said hi to me. And it, it really shook me to my core because it suddenly made it very apparent that these were real people. These were honestly true real people. And when I went home, I had this realization that I had a bunch of real people watching what I do. And I had a certain responsibility to try to guide them towards something good, or at least what I thought was so good. How did you choose cancer? I mean, I've chosen a bunch of different campaigns. This last one I've done is only the first of many, many that I've, I've done in the past. We've raised probably over three and a half million dollars for charity throughout my channel. And um, we've, we've, we've just done this because I just firmly believe that a group of people, you know, even if we're just watching video games, like any group of people can make a difference in the world. And, so and you owe back. I do, I owe everything back. We play a little game of if you only knew. Okay. I'm Who was your childhood celebrity crush? I didn't have any. Best advice you ever got? Uh, my dad, he's told me never to do anything half-assed. What does your father do? Uh, before he died, he was a uh, book layout artist, so he did the layout for computer books. Did he see your success? No, he never got a chance. Did your mother see your success? Yes. What's the worst advice you ever got? Um, smoke weed every day. That's bad advice. Someone you'd like to collaborate with you on YouTube? Ryan's tour reviews. The number one highest earning Forbes article YouTuber, apparently. What does he do? He's an eight-year-old kid. Apparently him and his family make $22 million a year opening toys. Opening toys? Yeah. What do you mean opening toys? Take a box of toy, you open it up, you pull it out. Wait a minute. <laughs> they get a box of toys. Yeah. They open it up and pull it out. Yeah. They make $22 million a year. Yeah. Why do people want to watch this? <laughs> because kids watch this. What's the biggest risk you ever took? Uh, quitting school for YouTube. Moment you knew you made it. When I was able to buy my first car. Person from history you'd like to take to lunch. Abraham Lincoln? Superpower you wish you had. Control time. Control time. Yeah, like go back in time, pause time, go, go forward, forward in time. Mm -hmm. Something that never fails to make you laugh. Um, my own stupidity. Who or what inspires you? Anyone that lives up to their potential. Someone you wish you could switch places with for a day. Nobody, yeah. I like my life. Uh, something we should all be paying more attention to. Uh, how to help people in your local community. Next big game to sweep the market. I hope it's Doom Eternal. I'm really looking forward to that one. Doom Eternal is a new game? Oh yeah. And what makes it exciting? I don't know. You're literally fighting demons. You're blowing up monsters. Seems pretty fun. What's the greatest game you've ever played? That would be a game called Homeworld. It's a, it's about space. It's about space exploration and like building a colony in space. Played it way back in like when I was probably like 12 or 14 or whatever. How many? How much gaming is going on? Oh, more than anybody knows. Gaming is a bigger industry than movies, TV. Like, gaming's huge. Place we find you on a day off? At home, from my computer. But with your computer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there something you long believed to be true and then realized wasn't? Uh, for so long, I thought I was destined for a uh, boring life. Markiplier in 10 years. 
Uh, hopefully not dead. After the break, no surprise, we were <laughs> flooded with social media questions from Markiplier. He'll answer some of them in our final moments. Don't click away. <laughs> Okay, we have some um, questions from social media. Right. Zachary Taglioli on Facebook. What's your favorite thing to do when you go to Hawaii? Oh, well, I hate the ocean, but I do like paddle boarding. That's nice. You hate the ocean? It's just full of death. I don't like the ocean. I don't like water. Exactly, right? Mm. Jane Vixo on the Larry King blog, uh, Larry King Now blog. Is there a video you, you've made that means the most to you? Uh, there was this video that people made for me uh, back when I had 20,000 subscribers. It was full of fans and some of my very close friends that were, that were giving this honest thank you to me. And uh, when I watched it, like, I, I couldn't help. I was, like, overcome with emotion. Like, I cried like a baby watching it just because to hear my friends speak so highly of me. Thanking you for what? For just, like, trying something. Ellen Markey on the Larry King Now blog. Do you sleep in bed with your dog? No. Chica sleeps on the floor because Chica breathes real heavy and moves the bed. What kind of dog? A golden retriever. They're beautiful. Yeah. We got another one uh, that's a half golden, half, like, border collie or something. Jane Vexo also asked, is there another YouTube channel you watch religiously? Uh, there's this one called Kurzgesagd. What? It, it, it's like Swedish or something for in a nutshell. It's not Swedish. I'm very wrong on that. But uh, it's, uh, it's basically a, a channel that explores scientific topics and they explain some complicated topics in a very nice way. Are you on your computer all day? All day. Stephen Rapp on the Larry King Now blog. Do you play any board games? Yeah, I like uh, Settlers of Catan, you know, some card games like Cards Against Humanity, stuff like that. I don't play as much as I want to. I would love to play, like, uh, Dungeons & Dragons or something like that, but just no time. Is that still popular, Dungeons & Dragons? It's gaining more popularity, actually. Yeah, it's ramping up. I think people miss the sense of, like, closeness in playing with people, and that really brings a big element out of it. And there's even people that are playing on YouTube, like Dungeons & Dragons, they're, like, playing together and recording it. So. Are you thinking of new games to play all the time? I have to, yeah. I gotta keep on top of it, or else I'll slowly... So are relevant. you doing it all the time? Yeah. yeah I, I work weekends, I don't take days off, I just, every day. Steven also asks, do you ever want to have kids? I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's really up in the air for me. Not now, anyway. I believe I'd be a good dad because my dad taught me a lot of really good lessons about parenthood. But for right now, my life just isn't in that place. Did your dad die young? He died when I was 18. He was, he was older when he had me. He had me when I was, he was 48 or something, I believe. Yeah, and so he died when I was 18. Lauren Wells on the Larry King Now blog. What's something we don't know about Markiplier that we'd be surprised to hear? I don't know. I've pretty much confessed my entire existence on YouTube, so I don't think I have any surprises left. Uh, People I, know you. I try to make it that way. You're an open book. I believe that YouTube lives on authenticity. So, like, if, if they don't know who I am as a person, then there's no point in even making videos. Have you ever gone to the, to the YouTube offices? Yeah, I've been there. For Where what? are they? Uh, there's one in, in uh, Beverly Hills. There's one down... Uh, in Playa Vista, and then the main one's in um, some other city north. What's, what's there when you go there? It's just a bunch of people in cubicles. Like, there's really nothing production-wise that I go there for. It's, it's uh, people running the servers and whatnot. I know the late, there's a lady that runs it. Yeah, Susan Wojcicki is the Yeah, CEO. I sat with her at dinner once. You did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never had a chance to actually speak face-to-face. -face. Very nice lady. Hmm. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Big thanks to my guest, Mark Applier. What a story. Be sure to tune into his YouTube channel. Also visit cloakbrand.com to see his new clothing line. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at King's Things. And I'll see you next time. Let's play some games.